So just because there are some harmonics above the fundamental on a sine wave in Mass Effect, that doesn't mean it's actually aliasing. Hey guys, this is Shane here from Echo Soundworks, and in this video, I'm going to touch on what's kind of become a controversial topic surrounding Massive X. I don't know why. There's some videos, some misinformation out there claiming that Massive X aliases. So I have a first look video, which I'll link to in the description, where I run through Massive X. Overall, I think it's a great synth. There are some things that native instruments can improve on, but that's literally every synth out there, especially the first release or first version, right? The 1.0 of a synth. So what I want to touch on in this video is the aliasing. Now, what I what I found interesting about this was, for me, the first time I used Massive X, the sound was great. It had a great sound quality. It might have I might have been missing a couple features that I grew to love in other synths, but it sounded great. The wavetables sounded good. Just the actual sound quality of the synth itself sounded really good. Now, that doesn't actually make any sense because people are saying, well, it's aliasing. If you have an aliasing synth, it's usually going to produce some type of artifact that is noticeable to our ears. It's going to sound a little weird, a little wonky, a little off. So in this video, I'm going to show you Massive X A isn't aliasing, and B, even if it were, we have complete control to stop the aliasing that isn't occurring. So let's dive into Massive X and see what's going on. All right, so the first thing I want to get out of the way right up front is the Native Instruments did not ask me to make this video. They didn't sponsor it. There's no money exchanging hands. I'm literally making this because I want to dispel some misinformation that's being perpetuated online about Massive X not having a pure sine wave and aliasing. So to do that, we need to have an understanding of aliasing. Well, that's an entire video on its own. Um, but what I, I I will quickly touch on the concept of aliasing kind of in a layman's term. So now I'm by no means an expert in the math, the you know, the mathematical theorems behind aliasing. If you guys want to do a deeper dive, Google aliasing synth and then type in Nyquist or Nyquist theorem or Nyquist limit, and you should get some really good results. But basically, for those of you who just want a quick basic understanding of this complex topic, you can think of aliasing like this. As a frequency exceeds a range, kind of this limit. Which, stand, which I believe is FS over two, you're going to get some of those frequencies reflect back into the audible range, to the audible frequency spectrum that we can hear as inharmonic tones. Now, it's very important that we focus on those last two words, inharmonic tones. So inharmonic tones, you, you, to, you, if you guys don't know what those are, Basically, every note that you play has a fundamental. That's the note they're actually playing, like a C4. Now, there are going to be harmonics above that note, that make up the sound that we hear as C4. There's other frequencies involved. It's not just what, you know, the hertz value of C4. There are inharmonic overtones and harmonic overtones. Harmonic ones make sense to that, to the specific notes. Inharmonic ones are kind of, if you can think of it like this, it's kind of like playing out of a scale or out of key in the DNA of the frequency of that note. That's a kind of a you know, good parallel to music theory. So when you have a bunch of inharmonic tones, you can get dissonant sounds. You can get something that just doesn't sound right, doesn't sound typical, doesn't sound normal. That's what was so strange when I started hearing people say that Massive X is aliasing because it sounds really good. That's, that's like its strong suit. The oscillators sound incredible. So that being said, let's check out what I've done in Massive X. I have loaded up a blank patch. I routed oscillator at one to our output. I loaded up the basic wave one of the basic wave tables that has a sine waveform in it and i have gone fully counterclockwise or the leftmost position to access that part of the wave table which is just a sine wave now what people are doing online is they're loading up fab filter pro q3 or voxango span and they're playing a sine wave and what they're doing is they're seeing these little frequencies right here and they're saying oh that's proof that massive x is in fact aliasing well no because these are harmonic tones so this is an aliasing because this is the harmonic series that you would expect with a C4. So I'm playing our, with the middle C. So I'm playing middle C. So our first one is a G5. G5 is the third harmonic above C, uh, above C4. E6, I believe, is our fifth harmonic. I'm not sure what A sharp 6 is, but I know it is, in fact, a harmonic. So these aren't in harmonic tones. All right, so let's load up Serum, our dear old friend Serum, and actually look at what aliasing looks like and sounds like. So you're thinking, what? Serum aliases? Well, not really. The default oscillator settings mode in our global tab is 2x, which means we have 2x oversampling. We also have a 4x option. There is this 1x draft mode, which allows you to basically turn off the oversampling in Serum, 
which in turn reduces its CPU footprint. So it's a great way when you're writing, when you're just messing around, layering synths, right? And then you know when you get to actually mixing your song, you definitely want to go to bounce or freeze or keep it in 2x or 4x for the sound quality. But there's the 1x draft mode there, you know, just to save CPU resources. So if we go back to the main page here, I have loaded up the sine wave. And just so you see this, I will load up our pure sine wave. And we can see that we do in fact have a pure sine wave. So let's load up Fab Filter Q let's load up Fab Filter Pro Q3 and see what this looks like. So this is aliasing. This is what aliasing actually looks like. And this is pretty bad aliasing, but that's because it's in 1x or draft mode. So you notice that we don't have in we don't have the harmonic series that we had, right? It's not clean, it's not neat. You can actually hear it. You can hear that buzz. Play a chord. Let me turn this down because that was really loud. Right? You can hear that clipping or that kind of buzzing sound happening at the higher frequencies. That's the aliasing. Now, if I do a frequency sweep, I'm gonna turn this way down to do this. Let's go back into Serum, put these side by side. If I do a frequency sweep, sweep with a coarse pitch, right, you'll notice that we, we hit a point. I don't know how many of you can even hear that. I'm gonna mute that while I play that, but we'll still be able to see the frequency spectrum. So here's, this is our fundamentals, way up there, and you see all these frequencies below it. Well, we shouldn't obviously have that. We're playing in A9, so why are there frequencies down here, you know, the A0 range, right? Well, that's because the frequencies are reflecting back across the spectrum. So that being said, let's look at let's look at Massive X when I do that. We're gonna load up Massive X. We're gonna load up FabFilter Pro, Fab Pro Q3. I don't know why I can't say that today. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sweep through our spectrum. So I need to make, make Massive X a little bit smaller so we can see both of these at the same time. I should do the trick. All right, so now I'm going to sweep up through our frequency spectrum. All right, you'll notice that up at the top, and I'll even modulate up through with a pitch mod, right? So we're, we're going to be able to actually pitch up, pitch this up so high we'll stop hearing sound. Right, so if this was actually aliasing, we'd see a bunch of frequencies bounce back in and we'd hear those frequencies as like this weird static. All right, so one thing I wanna to touch on, there are a lot of synths out there, subtractive synths that don't actually have pure sine waves. A Moog is one of those. A lot of the Moogs don't have a pure sine wave. So this is a synth made by Synapse Audio called The Legend, incredible synth, doesn't have a sine wave. But because it's a subtractive synth, we can just load up a square wave or a triangle and filter out some of the frequencies to approach a sine wave because sine waves are the building blocks of pretty much every, every sound. Now, if I play this right here and we look at our FabFilter Pro Q3, right, we have a lot of frequencies over it. But if I turn my, my cutoff filter down, the, the filter cutoff, I should say, right, well, now we have kind of a sine sound and you'll see that we actually have, so I'll play middle C again, just like with our massive example, we actually have the same harmonics. We can see that we have G, G5, down here we can actually see E6 happening. If I turn our filter up a little bit, the E6 will pop back up a little bit higher. So those are in fact harmonics. They're not, you know, they're not uh, aliasing. Now, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because subtractive synths are meant to subtract frequencies. It's what they do. Is literally why they're called subtractive synths. Now, Massive X actually has a really cool feature. It actually has a filter in our oscillator section, which allows us to filter out harmonics directly at the oscillator. So you don't have to do that very thing with our actual main filter. It's this filter knob right here. So if you want to you know, use a very clean, pure sine wave in Massive X and the harmonics are bugging you, what you can do, just turn this filter down, right? Now, the great thing about this filter, and why I said it's special, is we don't lose any of the power, any of the oomph of our fundamental. So I'm, I'm gonna pitch this up an octave, right? So we have a clean, pure sine wave, no harmonics. Here's the harmonics, right? But what's special about this filter is it's just, fil it's just filtering out the harmonics. If we did the same thing with a low pass filter, and we'll load up the low pass filter in massive for this. I'll just, it'll, it'll work the same pretty much every synth. Right, we see our hive, we see our fundamental, we see our harmonics, check this out. All 
All right, so as I turn this down here, we actually start to lose our fundamental because we're filtering out so many frequencies, right? Once we, once our cutoff point gets below C5, we're going to stop hearing it. That's what's so cool about the harmonic filter in Massive X is it just filters out the harmonics. So this obviously comes into play when you're using more harmonically complex waveforms. You can dial back some of the complexity to get the sound to fit just how you want. All right, so that's going to sum up this video. For those of you who thought Massive X was aliasing, hopefully now you realize that is it. it is in fact not aliasing. That sine wave just has some harmonics above the fundamental. So if you have any questions or comments, post those below. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. If you guys like this video, you want to see more videos like this, well, we're probably never going to do another aliasing video again on this channel. But if you want to stay up to date with the content on this channel, hit that subscribe button and please hit that notification bell so you get an update when we release a new video. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching.